So I have never seen an experienced D&D player just simply empty their bowels as quickly as when I gave their level 3 paladin a holy avenger. So a while ago, Brennan, Brennan Lee Mulligan, uh, hi. So Brennan was saying that, you know, in settings where there are you know, immensely powerful gods and demons and stuff like that, why is it that, like, a, a party of level threes in a pub are the people that actually have to go and do stuff? Why are we entrusting the fate of the world to, uh, you know, these misfits when the actual gods could come down and, you know, use their immeasurable amounts of power to solve the problem instantly? See, my immediate response to that was, it's the Cold War. It's spy shit. So the question of, you know, why doesn't Helm or Bahamut just come down and deal with things when things are going bad, well, why doesn't America just, you know, interfere when everything, oh wait, you guys do. The reason here is international relations. The reasons in setting, however, might be divine relations. I mean, the deities can't be, like, popping down to the material plane every two weeks to wage war. In about a month, there just wouldn't be a material plane left. And so, my suggestion is it's a cold war. Every god, every demon, every archfey is trying to expand their sphere of influence. Now, you can't always have, like, a cleric just receive a vision and then go off on a crusade, because that's going to draw too much attention. And maybe things are even more tangible than that. Maybe, like, the gods and the demons actually have, like, agreements and treaties with one another. And so we have spy shit. And the thing is, it's kind of already written into the warlock law, right? Like, the next time you feel that your fiend patron warlock, you know, needs to do something for their patron, Instead of being like, yes, see that guy? Kill them! Instead, what you can do is go, okay, there's a bank on 52nd and 14th. You're going to go to the reception and you're going to ask for Harold. Harold is then going to take you to the safe deposit boxes. You're going to ask Harold to open box 249. He will ask you for a password. When the time comes, you will know. You're going to take the contents of box 249 and you're going to walk down to the park just west of there. A man in a bowler hat will bump into you. Keep on walking, don't worry about it. Spend at least two hours at the park feeding the ducks and then dispose of the package in one of the trash cans you'll find there. Then you can go back to your life and whatever it is you do, and if you do everything right, we can talk about getting you some more spell slots, alright? The thing that I really like about this is it can be a really good story hook as well. See, the warlock or the cleric or whoever's doing the thing isn't actually supposed to know, you know, what the package is for, who it's going- Who was the man in the bowler hat? They're not supposed to know anything, but if the party really wants to know, alright, you've got a plot hook. The first time I tried this, you know, the, the party just rocked up to a new town, uh, going to the inn, and a figure in a dark robe leans over to the paladin and goes, Get the corner room. Hell Bahamut. So the paladin asks the innkeeper, I said, can I get the corner room? The innkeeper goes, oh, yes, follow me. The innkeeper takes him back and hands him a rusted old sword and a scabbard and says, the scabbard's enchanted. The paladin draws the sword. The illusion enchantment on the scabbard disappears. It's a holy avenger. The paladin's player goes, wait, wait, hang on, wait, wait, wait. We're level three. Why do I need? Oh, God. What do we need this for? Yes. What do you need that for indeed?